Welcome to this video from Learn Electrics. Over the years, I've had lots of calls from customers with various lighting faults. Some are real, just happened faults, but lots are self inflicted problems. Usually, as a result of some renovation or decorating work, where the customer has removed the wires to a ceiling rose or switch and reinstalled them incorrectly. Here, we have some of the more common and very typical faults that you may come across. For instance, the bulb is always on. Or the opposite, the lamp never comes on. Sometimes you will get a desperate phone call telling you that the fuse blows every time the light is switched on. And a very typical problem, the stair lights just don't work right. Sometimes I can turn them off and sometimes I can't. With any fault finding, always be methodical and always try all the switch and setting permutations yourself before dismantling anything. I would also recommend either drawing the wiring arrangement or photographing it before removing any wires. Now, the health and safety bit. We all know that electricity is dangerous. Always follow good health and safety methods and always carry out safe electrical isolation and lock off before working on any circuit that does not need to be live. Remember, you will find out first if it is still switched on. Your safety and the safety of those around you is paramount. Let's begin with the ceiling rose and look at how it should be wired according to the current three plate method. Remove the cover and we should have something like this, an example of what we call three plate lighting. Starting with the earth at the bottom and working clockwise, we have the switch block, the only two hole terminal block in the fitting. In the middle is the three hole live loop block. This block is permanently live. And then the three hole neutral block on the right. Notice the two cables entering the rows in the centre. The live cable from the consumer unit or previous room marked here as L and the switch cable that goes to and returns from the room switches marked S. And lastly, the two wires that go to the lamp or bulb. For the sake of clarity, and so that we don't mess the page up too much, we will get rid of most of the ceiling rows and just have the three terminal blocks on each slide. This will make it much easier to follow, and also you can easily relate these blocks to other types of lighting wiring where the live is looped between switches instead for instance. Also shown here are the terminals for a two-way switch. One of the holes will very obviously be separate a little further away from the other two. This is the common terminal and on some switches it may even be marked as COM for common. The other two holes are the switched contacts and only one of these is connected to the common at any one time depending on the switch position. First, one-way lighting. How should it work? And how is a healthy and correct one-way circuit wired up? Let's look at some simplified drawings. All of the following drawings will use the same pattern. At the top left is the incoming phase and the outgoing neutral. All that we want to do, all that we want to do, is to get the electric that comes in on the phase to go through a switch that we can control go through the lamp so that it lights up and then leave the circuit on the neutral wire. And that's it in a nutshell. On all these drawings, a correctly wired circuit has a green tick on the page and a wrongly wired circuit has a red X. So here is our healthy one-way lighting circuit. Electric enters at the top left and goes to the live loop terminal. This terminal is permanently live. Then, a wire from the live loop goes to the common at the top of the switch. And it stops there. On this drawing, there is no connection to the other side of the switch, and so the lamp, or bulb as some say, is off. If the switch is operated, there will be a connection across the switch. Current will flow up the blue wire to the switch block marked SW here. Notice that this blue wire has brown markers at each end to indicate that it is not neutral. It is a phase wire and will at times have 230 volts on it as now. 
From SW, the current travels along the pendant wire to the lamp, through the lamp, along the second pendant wire to the neutral block and out of the circuit on the neutral wire. If all that circuit, all that electrical route is complete and unbroken, the lamp will light up. Some typical problems now. First, the bulb is always on. The lamp, as it is called, is always on regardless of the switch setting. I've had this problem a few times, especially after the customer has decorated. They've taken the pendant fitting off whilst they papered the ceiling or fitted a new ceiling rose and then put the wires back where they thought they should go. Putting the switch in the opposite setting makes no difference. The lamp, the pendant wire, is not connected to the switch block. It has been connected to the permanent live. The lamp is permanently energised. Whenever the lighting circuit breaker is on, the lamp will be on. The solution? Isolate the circuit, and then move the pendant wire from the live loop to the switch block. Another one, especially after decorating, is where the lamp never comes on. We will assume that we've been through all the usual tests by checking that the lamp actually works in a different room, and that the lamp that does work in another room does not work in our suspect pendant. If we examine the light switch, we may find that the wires are in the two switched contacts. The wrong light switch terminals have been used. Whichever switch position is chosen, the lamp will not come on. There will never be continuity in this circuit. One of the wires needs to be in the top, the common terminal. The solution then, move one of the wires into the common terminal and refer back a few slides to what a healthy circuit should look like if need be. Another common problem after decorating is this one. The customer tells you that every time they switch the light on, it blows the fuse. They are usually quite desperate at this stage as they now have no lights in the house. If the switch is off, the breaker is OK. But when they switch it on, bang, all the lights in that part of the house go out. So, what has happened and how do we fix it? The customer will tell you that they've been decorating and they've put the wires back themselves. To the customer, all blue wires are neutral and should all go together in the neutral block. But we know different, or should do. The blue switch wire, the one with the brown markers on the end, is a phase wire. By putting this blue phase wire into the neutral block, we are effectively shorting out the phase to neutral every time the switch is operated. Of course, the circuit breaker will trip. It's doing its job to keep us safe. The solution? Put this blue phase wire with the brown markers back into the switch block. Now, let's look at two-way lighting. And first, again, we will consider how it should work in a healthy, fault-free circuit. These healthy circuit drawings will have a green tick on them. In this example, electric enters the circuit at the top left, as before, into the live loop block and then from the live loop along the brown wire to switch A. But from switch A, it cannot get any further. The switches are in the wrong positions and so the lamp is off. If we change the position of switch A now, the electric enters the circuit at the top left, as before, through the live loop and down to switch A then through the switch to the common terminal of the same switch A, along the black wire and into the common terminal of switch B. It then goes through switch B to the grey wire and back to switch A. Out of switch A on the blue phase wire to the switch or SW block, along the pendant wire, through the lamp and back to the neutral block. The current leaves the circuit on the neutral wire and because the circuit is complete, the lamp lights up. Now, change switch B over this time. The circuit is the same up to switch B. But now, because the switch contacts have moved, it leaves switch B on the brown wire. The brown wire joins the first brown wire at switch A. Then the electric goes off to switch B again and back out on the brown wire. It is caught in a loop and cannot make the jump to the blue wire in switch A. So the lamp will be off. This time we will change switch A over. The electric comes from the live loop to switch A on the first brown wire 
and then travels to switch B on the second brown wire. It goes through switch B to the black wire, along the black wire back to switch A, through switch A to the blue phase wire, and up this blue phase wire to the switch block, along the pendant wires to the lamp, back to the neutral block, and out on the neutral wires. A complete circuit, so the lamp lights up. So easy when it works correctly. A frequent problem with two-way lighting is found when the customer complains that the stair lights just don't seem to work right. And this also fools some electricians if they've not seen this before. I've had more than one customer tell me that it seems like one of the switches is a master switch. If we turn the light on from the bottom of the stairs, it is possible to turn it off from upstairs. But if we turn the light on at the top of the stairs, then we cannot turn it off at the bottom switch. We have to turn it off again at the top and then the bottom will work again. The issue is crossed wiring between the two switches. The black and brown wires in switch B have changed places. They've been crossed over. Follow the wiring on this diagram just as before. Electric can flow through switch A to switch B and back to the blue phase wire in switch A. This allows current to flow through the circuit and illuminate the lamp. And that's OK. If we operate switch A, we can again follow the circuit through switch A and onto switch B and back again to switch A. But the electric cannot get to the blue phase wire in switch A, and so the circuit is broken at that point. There is no continuity and the lamp goes out. And this is OK too, because that is what we wanted. Now operate switch B and the circuit becomes continuous again. Trace this wiring and you will see that the current can flow to the blue phase wire now and all other things being equal, the lamp will light up. Another good sign. Here comes our problem. If we change switch A position again, we will find that things go wrong. If you trace the wiring, you will see that the brown wire at switch B is always connected to the grey wire of the switch which leads to the blue phase wire at A. It does not matter what position switch A is in, with switch B in this position there will always be electric to the grey wire and ultimately to the blue phase wire. The lamp will always be on. The customer tells you that they have to change the position of switch B again and then operate switch A again to get the lamp to go off. This is our master switch scenario and the customer doesn't like it, not surprisingly. But the solution is very easy. Remove the black wire in this case and put it in the top or common terminal. The wire that was in the common in switch B now goes to the terminal from which you removed the black. You are simply swapping them over. And hey presto, when you put the power back on, all is as it should be. Of course, the crossover wiring could be in switch A, in which case A becomes a controlling switch, but this happens less frequently. Well, there we are. A brief introduction to some typical lighting faults. Patience and a methodical approach will always solve the problem. Ceiling roses are notorious for being packed with 10, 12 or more wires, so always write down or photograph the wiring before removing any wires. That, at least, will give you a chance of getting back to where you started from. And a later video looks at testing and tracing lighting circuit wiring with your test meter. Thank you for watching this video, it is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. Here are some tips on getting even more information and help out of learnelectrics.com. At your web browser, enter learnelectrics.com into the search bar, select learnelectrics.com from the choices offered, and the website, as shown, will open up for you. You now have a couple of choices. You can search for a help item or any video by entering a keyword into the search bar on the right. Click on Return and all the help files and videos with that word in the title will be listed for you. They will be shown with a short description, 
Click on Continue Reading for more information. Each video listed will have a link shown that will take you directly to that exact YouTube video. Or you can browse through a list of all the available items and videos. To do this, click on the LE logo on the left of the home page and all our items and videos will be shown. There will be 10 items shown on each page and at the bottom of each page is a page selector, page 2, 3, 4, etc. that will bring up the next 10 items or videos in the list. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel. Don't miss the next one. Once again, thanks for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.